it was funny. <laughs> I was just thinking, you know, man, you know, I, I posted my morning routine, you know, kind of a bunch of stuff that I put on the internet for people to read and to consider, to be inspired and to point them in the direction of maybe finding a personal, intimate relationship with the Lord, you know, and sometimes just relating to them my personal, you know, experience with God and how He's used and sometimes confused me, you know, <laughs> in a lot of ways. But the point being is that I thought I was done with all of my video and kind of like posting and kind of devotionals and all that, and I got a lot done, you know, and I thought, man, I'm kind of tired, Lord, you know, so I took a nap. You know, I got done, you know, I started about 6 o'clock and was done by, well, I don't know, about 10 o'clock and probably had 20 or 30 original material posts done. And so, you know, I was for some reason tired and sleepy, so I took a nap, you know, and woke up and then uh, kind of felt like, well, you know, I, I don't know what to do now, Lord, you know, I got time, you know, what do you, what do you want me to do? And I was kind of like, nah, yeah, I don't feel like doing that. Nah, 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 nah. And I hadn't taken a bath yet, so my wife took off, went to the store, you know. I sat down and I thought, okay, you know, I, I think I'll, and I grabbed all these books, you know, I said, I think I'll take a bath. So I grabbed all my books, you know, my devotional books, and I thought, I'm not going to record them today, I'm going to read them, you know, and I don't record them every day, although my early Vindivo, you know, from Evotional Network, I did record usually seven, seven devotionals every day, just boom, 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 you know, just recorded them one right after the other, read them talked about them, shared them, shared about them, prayed about them, boom, God. And they are out there, and people are really blessed by them, you know, and matter of fact, I even look at them now and then and go, who that? <laughs> I'm surprised, wow, that was pretty good, <laughs> wow, that was interesting, you know. And so, I was getting into, like, uh, the devotionals, you know, I was surprised, you know, as I read them, I was going, I read one after the other, and I had my, my noodles, oh, by the way, I, when I take a bath, I bring my food with me, <laughs> yeah, I'm one of those kind of guys, you know, you get me in the bathtub, I got my Pepsi, I got my food, I got my devotionals, I got maybe a clipboard, you know, I got maybe pen and note and towel, you know, to wipe my hands off, so that way I can write something down, just in case, get some ideas, because you see, the Lord speaks to me, you know, everywhere and anywhere, but boy, does he speak clearly in the bathroom? <laughs> Especially when I'm taking a bath. So here I was getting involved in, you know, all these different devotional books, you know, and I was kind of like, man, you know, Lord, I was looking at my things, you know, and I was going, you know, I probably should get back involved with, you know, Spurgeon. So I kind of was playing with how much I really love Spurgeon, you know, and I, I think if I remember right, I started off with Spurgeon, you know, and I was reading it, and uh, I think I got all excited about what Spurgeon had to say. Oh, yeah. You know, and... I was getting interested in what Spurgeon had to say because I had decided before, you know, I read the devotionals that I wanted to upload some material to the web so that I could pass it around to people so they could enjoy it, you know, and, and things that inspired me, like Jesus of Nazareth or, you know, some other Bible study material. And so... I went, you know, Spurgeon's kind of cool, you know, I said, he's kind of archaic at times, but some of the stuff's pretty good, you know, so that I opened it up and I was reading, you know, and it said, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. He never deserted them, but they inwardly, in cowardly fear of their lives, fled from him in the very beginnings of his sufferings. This is but one instructive instance of all the frailty of all believers if left to themselves. Man, I was like, whoa, what am I doing here? Or I'm one of those fleeing. Man, I'm sitting here in the bathtub, you know, taking care of my personal hygiene. I'm sitting here laying here, you know, kind of eating my food, feeding my flesh. Man, God, I should be out there recording videos, you know, and doing more and telling more and getting. And I got all wound up. I got excited. I said, I gotta tell somebody. You know, I gotta go out and tell somebody. Gotta tell somebody. Gotta tell somebody. Got to tell somebody, got to tell somebody what Jesus did for me. Got to tell somebody, got to tell somebody what Jesus did for me. You know, and you know the Don Francisco song. <laughs> you got to tell somebody. Well, you know, that's the way I felt. Now, I will admit, you know, that might not be the way you feel. Might not be the way you act. Matter of fact, 
I seriously doubt, unless you're Michelle Pillard, she said she hears the Lord speak to her in the bathtub too. But anyways, I seriously doubt even if, even Michelle Pillard, if she actually takes food in her bathtub. <laughs> you know? Me, man, I'm eating and I'm drinking and I'm chewing on the Word of God too, you know, getting it all in, you know. But then I set it down, you know, and then I'm just laying there in the hot water and just, ah. <sighs> and you know, the mind begins to unwind, only the Lord begins to find, you know, all of my inspiration. And suddenly I can't wait to get out of the tub to run <coughs> to my towel, <laughs> wrap it around, to run to the camera, to sit down, to share, and to talk about what Jesus told me there. Yeah. Huh. You know, I think that's what the gospel was meant to be. You know, not so much so just us sitting around going, you know, let's invent a new way to tell people about Jesus today. You know, let's let's come up with some kind of like new program, you know, let, let's get this movie star to come in and give his testimony. And then let's get this rock star to come in and do their testimony. Let's get bigger and better and more famous names that people have heard of that we can bring more people in to get them saved. I don't know, I think that originally it was just a bunch of nobodies telling somebody about someone that they met that they figured out was a somebody because the nobodies didn't know that they was somebody that they found out because somebody told them told the nobodies who he was because the somebodies that were around didn't believe that the nobody could be somebody and that the somebodies was someone that would make the nobodies into someone special. Did you get that? <laughs> I did. And when I did, I ran out and told my family all about it. It was like, you know, I couldn't wait to tell them. I told them, I got saved, Mom. Guess what? Jesus saved me. I died by man. I said, you know, I once was blind, but now I see myself. Well, now I'm found. I said, it's like a whole different experience. I said, I can see things. I can know things. I, you know, it's like, wow. She said, go to your room. You know, I went to my room, and I read my Bible. <laughs> but the point of most of what happens in people's realities is that you get and share what you know, not what you don't know. Now you see, I don't know what some of these people do or you know where they come from. So I'm not real big on going to see somebody give me their testimony. And I was like, well, that's nice, you know. I don't know you, so it's like, okay, I'm glad and happy for you. Glad you're safe, you know, God's got you down. You're on your way. But I'm more interested in you. You know, just the everyday average Joe Blow on the street, you who's just now found out about something exciting. Man, check this out. I just read it in the Bible. And you know, your excitement is contagious. It gets me excited. And when I get excited, God help you because I get blessed and I'm out flying in the heavens, you know. I'm, I'm gone, man. I'm heading for the first heaven. You guys can stick around, you know, because I'm trying to knock on the door for second heaven and make my way into the third. I wish you'd say come up here right now and I'd go and I'd be gone in an instant. But I don't think people expect to do that, do you? I do. I don't think people have a confident realization that this observation of life that you're in isn't really all there is. Any moment, in any split second, you could be raptured, first of all. That's nice. You know, it's like, well, okay, I get excited about that. But Enoch, that excites me. Enoch walked with God and he was no more because he couldn't be found because he pleased God. And God took him. Take me, I'm yours. You know? And it's not about wanting to be took because I'm sure Enoch probably was busy doing his thing, we're told. But that his ways pleased the Lord and God took him and he was found no more. And I like that because it kind of makes me appreciate the fact that we could have something more happen than fits in the 21st century or the 20th century and just sitting around acting like you know we've got to put our stage hats on you know and our stage you know, agenda on and we've got to make everything work with our sound system before God can move I don't know about you but you ever got heaven tripping you know kind of like I call it cloud tripping in a way. It's not astral projection, so don't go there. And it's not some Eastern Occidental kind of like mental assertion of the you know volition of your inner being being projected through the meditation process of you know. No, just looking up there and going, oh, Father, call me, and I'll come. 
And suddenly you feel drawn up. And you're drawn out. And you know, if you turned around, you'd look back and you'd see your body back there because you're up there. And you go, oh, Lord, wow, whoo. And you're kind of like, right back where you were inside your body again. You know, it's kind of like, that's cool. I've heard about this with drugs, but I never knew that it could be done in the spirit of God, that God could do that, that God could just say, come here. You know, and you go, and you go, oh, oh, I don't think I was built like this <laughs> to be separated from my flesh, <laughs> you know, to my spirit, to kind of like, you know, woo. It was. And it's not a mystical thing, so don't go there, you know, don't be some kind of weirdo, you know, that goes, I had an out-of-body experience and God took me to heaven and I can now tell everyone about it, you know. It's not like that. Anyone that's been to heaven doesn't talk about it, quite frankly, because it would be sim pure and simple. It's too wonderful. <laughs> you just... Not really a good frame of reference down here to explain what's up there. <laughs> Not much the same. <laughs> it's kind of like, eh, not really works. So it's kind of like, you know, not so good. But we try at times, and John tried to explain it, and people really messed it up. And that's what the book of Revelation is. They really mess it up because they don't realize it's just a perfect, exact witness of what he saw, what he heard, and what he handled with his own hands. Kind of like what we do with the gospel. Kind of like what we are called to do with sharing Jesus. Kind of like what we should be doing every day that we examine the Word. Because, you see, when I got saved, I was excitable. And you know, when I learn something, I'm excitable. And I don't know about you, but you know, when they said about that first love thing, I know what that means. Because, you know, I'm as excitable today as I was the first day I got saved. And I'm probably more excitable now because when I watch someone else learn it the same way I did, it's kind of like, ooh, isn't that cool? Yeah, man, give me five. Yeah, dude. Hey, you got it. Back Jack. <laughs> you know, and I get thrilled for them. It's like hugging a person at baptism. Oh, bro, give me a hug. Well, I'm all wet. So what? <laughs> give me a hug. You know, it doesn't bother me. It's like, who cares, man? You just got baptized. Isn't that cool? You know, or the first time that you, you spoke in tongues. Who cares? You know, that's for you. But anyways, it's nice. I know. You know, glad it happened. You know, I've been there, done that. Speak more than most people. And kind of like, don't really care that much about it. It's like, it's nice. Who cares? But when you come to a better appreciation of knowing who Jesus is, when you go, man, you know what? I heard him speak. Shh, don't tell anyone. Wow! Guess what? He heard him speak. <laughs> I'm like... Tell the world, you know, and you will, you know, someday, and you'll probably kind of like doubt it, you know, <laughs> I don't doubt that, <laughs> you'll doubt it, but you'll never deny it, really, because God wants you to hear him speak, God desires for you to know him personally and intimately, God wants you to be like a Spurgeon and go farther on, not to be fearful, or to turn your back on, or to run away, or to be like those who Bleed when the circumstances were such that they had all been warned of the danger and had promised to die rather than leave their master and yet when the time and circumstances came they fled and ran like I'll get out and you know today I see the same thing happening with Christians you know they get up in arms about all these weird topics of discussion they want to fight and argue and debate about you know like marriage or abortion or some social cause or some issue or some people or some ethnic group or whatever maybe they're always picking on somebody not they everyone but some Christians you know and they influence a lot more than what they'll admit because they're supposed to be the salt and they're losing their savor they're just really a pain you know they're kind of like uh -uh, that ain't the kind of salt I wanted that's more like rock salt and we shoot it out of shotguns <laughs> to blow people away so, like, if you're blasting at people, you're just rock salt for shotguns. You know, you're just shooting at things. You're shooting off your mouth and just blasting people. And really, you're hurting them more than you're helping them. And that's how you tell the difference what kind of salt you are. There's also the salt that kind of melts hard in the hearts. You know, you throw it on ice. Guess what happens when you throw rock salt or you throw salt on ice? It melts. So, if you're salt and you're loving a person and doing it the right way, their heart melts before you. They're just like, 
Yeah, I can't take it. You love me too much. Oh, bro. You know. And you just love him. You're like, well, I guess, okay. I'm glad. Hug me too. You see, that's why you are salt. Because it's also tasty. You know, I don't really get a chance to find too many people saying things that I taste their words and say, hmm, that's good. Most of the time I go, ooh, that's bitter. You know, and I have to kind of uh, drink some of the Word of God in order to wash out my mouth and get rid of that taste and that flavor because they put too much salt in. They're too much of whatever they are. But you know, when you get it just right, you know, when you've been a chef or a short order cook or whatever it may be, you put some salt in there to draw the blood out. You know, I don't know if you realize that, but when you put salt on meat, it draws the blood out. When you put salt water, you know, and a chicken in it, it draws the, the salt out. That makes it kosher, by the way, in case you didn't know that either. You know, you got to put, you know, salt water, you know, it's got to soak in there for 24 hours to kind of get all the blood out, and then you got to kind of take it back out and then wash the chicken again, you know, in clean water. But the point being is that it draws the blood out. And that's what saltiness should do. It should draw the blood out. Are you covered by the blood? Are you covered by Jesus? Are you being drawn out into a response that brings a savoring flavor to whatever you're put into? Do you spice it to the right degree? Or are you like blasting it and blowing it to pieces? What kind of salt are you anyways? You know, are you a salty character? You know, I mean, an old salt of the sea? You know, and mouthing off for you and me? Or are you rather... Someone who can be drawing people out, melting the hardened heart, the icy, cold, stone personality. Are you someone that can be used by God to savor and preserve the world in its ways, or do you have to open your mouth in order to do that? You see, it's not about what you say, it's just the fact that you're there. You don't have to go out and fight to do something about what's right, you just have to be there. Christians are Christians. Non Christians know when a Christian is present, it's obvious to them as light and dark. Yep, that's a Christian. You know, he didn't laugh at the joke. Everybody else was cussing and swearing and he was kinda like looking uncomfortable. You know, or we told something funny about the president and slammed him, but you know, he didn't react. You know, the per the Christian. Oh wait, you're one of those Christians that slams the president and slams other people? Okay, I guess you're just rock salt, you know, for shotguns, you know, not much good, you know, except to be trampled under man, because once you shot them, that salt's laying on the ground, you just get stomped on. No good anymore. All I can say is, what you do with your life determines what good you are in life, and what you haven't done with your life determines whether or not God gives you eternal life. If you haven't done something about your bitter condition, about your problems and issues that you haven't resolved in your relationship with God, then the question is, do you have a relationship with Jesus? Because if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, according to the scripture, and according to the word of God, you may think you have a relationship with God, but without Jesus, you have no relationship at all. So the bottom line is, don't find yourself in the castaway nature that God can't use you. Don't find yourself bitter and not making things better by you being there. Find yourself rather a flavoring ingredient to all the things that are going on in your life. And then you'll discover, quite frankly, just how exciting life can be. And you'll get wound up and you'll be amazed at how interesting all of your life suddenly becomes when you let God in it. God directed, and God choose to use even Spurgeon to show you today what he wants you to be, and how he wants you to speak, and what he wants you to say.